All right, today on Free Fuel Training, we are gonna talk about protective gear in this day and age uh, with the COVID-19 virus and a lot of recommendations that are changing uh, between the CDC and internationally and the World Health Organization and how those recommendations apply to law enforcement specifically. I'm sure this could be applicable for a lot of people, but some of the equipment that we're gonna be talking about that I have out here on the table for everybody to see, some of it is just things that wouldn't ordinarily be available to the general public. Uh, even if they are available to the general public, they're not something that people are gonna have had previous to all of this going down and which are almost impossible to find now that it has gone down. So over the last couple of weeks, uh, we've been watching trends, and the first trend was toilet paper and hand sanitizer disappearing from stores, and some of that has been caught up on. A lot of the local breweries by me have been switching to producing uh, alcohol in the proper concentrations to make hand sanitizer, and they've been donating them to police departments, which is great. So hand sanitizer, we have pretty well locked down currently here. Uh, the big problem is people having enough gloves, people having enough gowns, people having enough face shields, or goggles and people having masks or respirators. And the issue that we've been having is if you would look back a year ago and talked about things like N95 masks, everybody would have told you this is single use, you use it once you throw it away. And now we're having to reuse them and bag them and our emergency rooms are in terrible condition with having to do that type of thing. Uh, the, one of the emergency rooms near, near me, I was talking to nurses and they have a single surgical mask, not an N95, a single surgical mask a week, and they have to paper bag the surgical masks that they're using. So stuff has been getting crazy here since we started to actually have cases of it. Me, I'm not in that situation. I'm a cop on the street, and I have other options available to me. Available to me. So we're gonna talk with the one thing that most people are worried about right now because we don't always have time to glove up, and that's hand sanitizer. We use this at work, we call it goop. <laughs> It's just alcohol mixed with a gel and hand sanitizer, everybody's familiar with it. We use lots of it in police work. And one of the problems that we have online right now is people are saying that you can make your own hand sanitizer uh, mixing vodka with any type of gel. You can't do that. Well, I won't say you can't do that. You could do it if you knew how to increase the concentration of alcohol in the vodka. When they say that in order for a sanitizing substance to be effective from alcohol, it has to be 60% alcohol. They don't mean you can mix vodka with gel at a 60-40 at a ratio and then have enough alcohol in it in order for it to be effective as a, as a sanitizing agent. See, vodka is 40% alcohol, which means it's 80 proof. So only 40% of what's in the vodka bottle is alcohol. So vodka on its own, not entirely effective. I'm not saying it won't do anything if you just use straight vodka. I'm not a scientist, I don't know that. But the scientists are telling us they want it to be 60% alcohol, which means it has to be 120 proof. Now I guarantee you if you take vodka and then water it down so it's only 60% vodka to 40% of whatever gel you're gonna use, aloe vera gel or something, that's not gonna be anywhere near 60%. You're gonna reduce the amount of alcohol that's in it. What you need is something that is 60% alcohol and the big letters on the bottles, that's gonna be 120 proof. That's the number that we're looking for. So, I've been making my own hand sanitizer here. Uh, Distilleries near us have been giving us hand sanitizer, and basically the way you can make your own hand sanitizer, as far as I know, and according to the recommendations by scientists that are telling us how to do it, is you need to find something that's over 120 proof, or at 120 proof, somewhere a, a little above it. Now, anyone that's ever been in community college or been junior enlisted should be familiar with our good friend Everclear. Everclear can solve this problem. See. Everclear is, what is this, 190 proof, which means it's 95% alcohol. This makes the math pretty easy for us. So if we mix this, we can actually water this down. If you get yourself a little spray bottle, widely available still in my area at uh, Home Depot, Menards, Ace Hardware, all sorts of hardware stores. These home, gar home and garden sprayers, on the side, they have markings that tell you the volume that's inside. So if you mix this at about, ooh, 
70% Everclear and the rest with water or aloe gel or whatever you're going to use to make the product that you want to use. I've been just mixing it with water because I've got lots of Everclear and uh, I don't need it to have the gel for hand sanitizer. What I'm using this is a spray to clean the inside of my car. You can make something that's pretty effective as far as we know. You know, all the math works out on it. So if you're going to try to make your own hand sanitizer because this stuff isn't available or your own uh, spray to spray down your equipment, we have that whole video about sanitizing duty belts and other ancillary police equipment. I talked about alcohol. This is one of the ways that you can get alcohol. In fact, if you're going to do that, you can just use straight Everclear and that will kill everything, including you if you use too much of it. So there's something to talk about with using Everclear. The one safety concern you have to have when you're using this stuff is this is flammable all on its own. There's a lot of booze in this. So if you're going to use it to clean out your car or clean your belt, you got to make sure before you get back in the car, use it sparingly inside the car. Maybe just clean the steering wheel, let it dry off. Just clean the door, let it dry off. Just clean the control surfaces, let it dry off. Just clean the computer, let it dry off. And then get in the car after it's dried off. You put this on your clothes, you want to make sure you're doing it at home, away from any sparks, any flame, any type of thing like that. If you smoke, you got to be extremely careful with this. Don't smoke while you're using Everclear for anything especially straight, but you can in fact make a good sanitizing solution that you can spray on all sorts of stuff to clean it off with a garden sprayer and some Everclear. Please don't use vodka. Vodka is effective for many, many other things, but not as a sanitizer. So we're going over that. That's how you can make your own hand sanitizer. I haven't seen a run on Everclear or any other high proof alcohol. Most really high proof alcohols, you can get Alcohol, I think Spiritus is 92, 93, 94%, somewhere in there. That's even uh, stronger than Everclear, but that's one way that you can make your own hand sanitizer at home, your own sanitizing spray. You just have to make sure you're using above 60% alcohol by the time you work it all out. So what I've been aiming at with the Everclear is I just make stuff that's about 70% alcohol, do the real quick math, sixth grade math on my phone, fill the bottle up, 70%. With, with Everclear, the rest with water, and I've got a pretty decent sanitizing spray. I've been using that for a couple of days, and that's been working out really well. Another thing to take into consideration is how this is realistically being spread. Medical professionals are telling us the way this is being spread most is from people not having good hygiene. They're telling us you have to wash your hands. Wash your hands all the time. If you can't wash your hands physically in the sink, use hand sanitizer. But the recommendation is to scrub your hands with soap and water as much as you possibly can, especially after having come in contact with somebody that could have some possibility of having it, which means everybody. You have contact with somebody at work, wash your hands afterward. If you come into the station to eat your lunch, scrub the crap out of your hands before you go eating your lunch. And do not take your protective equipment off to rub an itch on your face or rub your eye. I am the worst with this, especially with, I'll just, I won't even think about it. I'll be on a call and I'll like, you know, touch my eye or something like that. It's a terrible habit to have and we all have to be cognizant of it so we reduce our risk of being infected. Because that's what everybody's saying is, this is the way people are getting infected, is touching things and then touching their face. So try to keep that to a minimum as well. So on to masks. Uh, recommendations have just changed. By the way, we're gonna put links to our old scholarly articles and stuff down below in the, the official recommendations. The recommendations have just changed where they're starting to talk about people just wearing masks in the general public all the time. In my previous video, I talked about what I was currently using, that I had a single N95 mask that we were bagging in a paper bag at work and using when we knew we had a confirmed case and then or we suspected we had a, a confirmed case, and then I had this around my neck, which I could pull up, and I wore this pretty much all the time. Now, obviously, the problem with this is if you're wearing it around your neck, if you actually do get something on it, it's staying on there, and you have to be careful about taking it on and off and not touching the front of the mask and all of that. You know, this doesn't have a rating on it, but what you're basically doing with this is it will provide you a certain amount of protection. Uh, these uh, fabric mass, but mainly what you're doing is if I have something, I don't want to spread it to someone else. So if I'm going, if this is all I've got is a fabric mask, I'm wearing this under the understanding that I'm trying not to spread it to someone else. So if I go into somebody's house or I'm going into a nursing home or something like that, I put a fabric mask on because I'm trying to protect those people from whatever I might have cut from the 40 other people whose houses I went into today. If I caught something from them, I don't want to spread it to someone else. And what we're worrying about is droplets. We're talking to people, there's, there's droplets coming out of our mouth, 
And we don't want that to be carrying the virus and making it easy for it to get to people's eyes and down their throats and stuff like that. Now, N95 masks, uh, it's under important to understand some of the nomenclature. So N means it's not oil resistant. So if the droplet's oil, this doesn't protect us against that. We're looking at water-based issues. We're looking about droplets coming out of people's mouths, bodily, droplets coming out of people's mouths, bodily fluids, N and then 95, is it gets 95% of the particles over 0.3 microns. So we're worried about water droplets. So 95% of it, it's keeping out through the mask, basically. The rest is in the links down below. P means it's oil resistant. This is a P100 mask, right there. P means even oil resistant droplets, it can keep those out. And 100 means 99.9% .9 of the particles over 0.3 microns, about. So what's important to note is the 100 rating means it's stronger, it's, it's more effective at keeping droplets out, and P is for oil resistant, N is for non-oil resistant when we're talking about these things. So this is not rated. This isn't a rated mask. It's just a piece of cloth that you can fold over a cloth and put inside of, and in order to protect you a little bit from droplets coming in uh, to your mouth and your nose, and to protect everyone else from the stuff coming out of your mouth that contains all the droplets coming out of your mouth. This is what up until a couple of weeks ago was the only recommendation. They were supposed to be single-use disposable, and now we put them in brown paper bags uh, and multi-use them, the N95 masks, P100s, protect you from more of the droplets. It also is important to note that it protects other people from stuff coming out of your mouth. So if you're sick and you're wearing this, it's also gonna protect them the same way a cloth mask would, actually a little better. This one's, these have a gasket along the back of it that seals around your mouth to keep everything in and everything from coming in. And lastly, we wanna talk about those droplets and getting them into your, your eyes. Uh, the best recommendation is, of course, a full face shield but how long do you think this would last in law enforcement, right? Or uh, what medical professionals are using is they're putting goggles on to be able to keep stuff from coming around the outside. What we basically have and what I think most cops are gonna have and probably most aren't even gonna use is going to be just shooting glasses. Unfortunately, this allows stuff to get around and still get into our eyes. Uh, most people that I've been seeing at other agencies are wearing either an N95 mask or a P100, the, the paper, masks and maybe eyeglasses, but most people have been wearing either a fabric mask or they've been wearing just nothing at all and they're saying, well, we don't have anything. And that's really unfortunate. So I'm gonna get on to what I've been using. A few years ago in the Chicagoland area, we had this thing go on called NATO and everyone was anticipating there were gonna be massive riots. And at that time, there was plenty of money floating around for these things. This is an Avon gas mask. And we got a bunch of cartridges for these. And uh, when I looked at them, I was like, ooh, it's got a magenta line on it. That's interesting. And I read further onto the specifications of these. And I said, well, what, what do these actually protect you against? So this one says CNCS P100. So this is an oil resistant 99.9% .9 of particles over uh, 0 0.3 microns, in addition to CS and CN, and we've got a whole bunch of these cartridges. And the great thing about these is that uh, you can sanitize this. Unlike this that we're putting in a paper bag and hoping for the best, uh, I can actually clean this, and I can clean it with my watered down Everclear sanitizer, and I can continue reusing this without risking getting it all over my hands. So I put rubber gloves on, put the mask on, Take the mask off, spray it down inside and out, let it dry, and I can reuse it again. Uh, that's what I've been doing with it. Plus, if we get into a fight with people, this is not coming off. This is going to stay on my face. For the most of the altercations that we're going to get in, this is going to stay on, it's going to stay in place, and it's not going to get knocked off. If it does get knocked, it's not going to crack and get into my eyes the way safety glasses would. It's designed to be used when you're fighting with people. 
Also, I can actually check the seal on this. Unlike these where I kind of have to pull, you know, push a little metal thing and be like, all right, I think it seals this thing. I take the flat of my hand, stick it up against the cartridge and I suck in and I can feel that it's sealed against my face. And if I put the flat of my hand against the side of the cartridge and suck in and I feel air come into the mask, I know it's not sealing properly. So this is what I've been using. Before I put it on, I put gloves on, I take the mask out of the, out of the bag that we had here, that I keep in the passenger seat, I pop it on my face, check seal, I go do what I'm going to do. Before I get back in the car, I take my container of the hand sanitizer I made. When I use it at work, I actually mix peroxide in along with the water so that way nobody can claim that I'm like carrying around an open container at work. You can't drink this stuff. I spray it onto the outside of the mask. Wait a few seconds, you know, 10, 15 seconds. Then I can remove the mask, put it back into the bag. Uh, every day I'm cleaning the inside of the mask out with alcohol as well. And that's been working out pretty well for me. I'm not sure that this is 100% the perfect thing to use, but I can tell you that uh, it's got to be better than reusing an N95. So uh, check your garage, uh, check the basement of your station in case you got a whole bunch of these sitting around like I found out we do. And this can be a really effective, really useful tool that has lots of protective characteristics for you that's actually better rated than what people are recommending. And on top of it protecting your eyes and your breathing, it also doesn't break and crack and get into your eyes because it's made for fighting. And uh, it's real easy to take on and off if you have a way to sanitize this. If not, it becomes a mess because you're gonna get stuff from people's houses all over and then you're touching it and you're cleaning your hands. So gloves on, put the mask on, check for fit, spray it down with alcohol, take it off, put it in the bag, gloves off, redo the hand sanitizer just to be extra safe. And every day I'm cleaning out the inside of my car with uh, alcohol, hydrogen peroxide, and water mixture set so that it's at least 60% alcohol. Mine's actually a little higher, 65, 70%. And that's what I've been doing. Uh, ancillary to that, and in addition to other videos, uh, things to think about, things like your refillable coffee cups. Lots of places aren't allowing you to use refillable coffee cups like this. What I'm using this for is I put my water in it. This is kind of my water bottle. So every day when I come home, I am taking this and I am cleaning it out in the garage before anything even comes to my house, it's getting sanitized. So dumping this out, cleaning it, again, with the alcohol spray. Uh, my watch is just kind of living in my car now, in the garage, because I don't want to bring this in. This comes into close contact with too many people. It's like wearing rubber gloves all day and then like hanging around in your house with rubber gloves. So my watch, luckily I wear the G-Shock like I've been doing for years, spray this down with the same stuff. My boots, uh, it's been a recommendation for a long time uh, since this whole thing began to spray your boots down uh, with alcohol top and bottom or to step into a bucket of bleach with them. I've been using the alcohol spray tops and bottoms, leave it in the garage and wear flip-flops into the house. And that's how I've been doing it. Uh, if you guys have any comments and questions and you're not on the Instagram live, please put them down in the comments below. We'll do our best with it. We may have to revisit this video if new stuff and new information comes out. So until next week, guys, be safe and take care of each other. Hey, thanks for watching Free Field Training on YouTube. While you're here, check out one of our other videos or head on over to the Patreon and see how you can get your name put on your videos like these fine folks over here. All the links are in the description, of course. We'll see you guys next time.